Good afternoon, everybody. We will start off in usual fashion with the TV broadcast section first and Sky Sports News with Jeremy Langdon. Jeremy. Hi, Frank. Hi. Can we just check on the two news first of all? Any fresh uh, issues and uh, who's unavailable for, for Brentford? Uh, Reese James unavailable probably for the season. Um, Mason Mount the same potential for the last game of the season, but probably not. Um, <clears throat> so that's obviously disappointing for us. Um, Kai still struggling a little bit with his knee, so won't be available for tomorrow. But the good news is he should be training at the end of the week. Would big blow for uh, Reese and also for Mason. Uh, can you tell us more? For all of us, you know, because they're big players. But um, Reese had a hamstring injury that he picked up in the Madrid game, got through the game, but we scanned it the following days. Uh, and Mason has been <clears throat> carrying this uh, pelvic sort of injury for for quite a while definitely predates myself by a while so he's been trying typically and uh, medical staff have been trying but we've got to a stage now where it's, he, he will have a minor surgery and then be uh, as I say probably a four week recovery which we all know where that gets us to. I mean, Frank the build up to this game has been rather dominated by all the speculation about the next manager and Pochettino possibly coming in would you back a Poch appointment and have you been asked actually for your view on that? I'm not going to get involved in any future manager talk because <clears throat> it's all speculation, as you say. So, simple as that. Um, would you expect them to be in charge for the final seven games given that you've lost all the first four? Um, I wouldn't expect anything in football, but you know, I think it's very clear that we're coming to this uh, club when it's in big difficulties. We had one day to prepare for Wolves, <clears throat> two games against Real Madrid. The second performance was much better. It was a proper team performance like I'd want to see. And the game in between that with Brighton where we had to change a lot of the squad. So there were a lot of factors um, as, to the, as to the four games that we've had since we've been working here. And as I said, uh, the, the, the team and the, the club have been struggling for a while. So we come in with a view to help and uh, we'll keep working to help in a short time. The world won't change in a short time, but we'll keep doing uh, our maximum to do that. Yeah, Thiago Silva made some interesting comments, didn't he, after Real? He said basically the squad's too big. You know, we need a, a better strategy for next season, at least right on the money there, isn't it? Thiago statements. Yeah. Okay. Last one, situation? Jeremy. Uh, last one, sorry. Um, seven games left, Frank. I mean, it feels like the season's over after Real. Um, is it? It feels like it was the tone of your question, is <laughs> <laughs> If I'm honest, so you know, if you want to think that way, but for me, it doesn't. I'm manager of Chelsea. I have a big link to this club and, and pride, and so should the players. So I think um, if you want to take it down your route and it's over, then my route is absolutely not over. Thanks. Olivia. Thanks. PLP. Hi. Um, there's not been many instances in your career where, at this stage of the season, even managerial and as a player, especially at Chelsea, you haven't had much to play for at this stage of a season, mm. is that weird for you? Is this something new that you're sort of taking on now? No, it's not. I understand it a little bit. Um, I don't have a mentality of that there's nothing to play for. And for, for, I was fortunate enough to be part of teams that were challenging normally for, for stuff towards the end of the season. But that's not a given. In fact, we've been fortunate at Chelsea to have that for, for what, 15, 20 years now. There's a lot of clubs, big status in the Premier League that, that don't do that. We do it. That's why maybe we feel it that bit more. So I think it's important that it's just there's a reality that when you have long careers, I've had one as a player and now a coach, um, you won't compete absolutely every season. It's not a given. So it comes down again to your personal you know, pride, responsibility, wearing a shirt. We've got now seven games, four against the top four, three away from home. So the, the running's really tough. There's no doubt about that. So my interest is to see how the players react to that one because they're tough games. Um, so there's always something on those games. I understand that and the players have to understand that. A lot of players obviously recently and, and have been brought in for the future. There's a lot of players whose futures are uncertain as well, so players that have been here for a while. Are we going to see any opportunities for those players that have been brought for the future, the likes of maybe Carnage or Kometa, Lonnie Madweke, McCarlin Madrid, those sorts of players? If they deserve it. If they deserve it, for sure. I think there are, there are two things. There's the individual work of showing that you deserve it, and I'm fu fully for that. You know, my first period at the club, I came in with, you know, a transfer ban and, and losing big players, and everyone said, "Oh, of course, the young players get in the team. They got in the team because they deserved it of how they trained and those things." And that's um, a culture and a way that you have to have at a top football club. And I don't think that changes just for the moment. I think that should always be there. So, you know, players have to train 
those the seven games and days of training now are all opportunities every day to try and show you deserve to be in the team. And as I think I've probably shown as a coach, if you do that, you'll always get an opportunity with me. And just finally, I just want to ask you one on Brentford. Um, what have you been impressed with most since they came up to the Premier League? Because you know, finishing 13th last season, but in 10th currently, it's been a pretty brilliant season for them, hasn't it? Yeah, I've been impressed with everything. Um, stability, uh, really good coach, uh, consistency to stay with the coach through difficult moments which you have in seasons, which you know, for, for a team like Brentford, establishing, establishing themselves in the Premier League will mean moments maybe of difficulty. I've, they've come through those always. A real clear idea of how they want to play, a real clear idea of the link to the recruitment with how they want to play. So I think that's a, obviously a huge credit to everybody involved. Thank you. Marvin. Frank, can I just ask you, you mentioned difficulty. What's been the biggest challenge you've had since you've come back? Is it just the fitness of the players, the schedule, or even the results you've had so far? Well, the schedule, the schedule was always going to be challenging, but I, I knew that coming in, so that was a challenge in terms of trying to Work with the players, see them firsthand. You can't make too many prejudgments, and of course the games came thick and fast. And then we had a lot of uh, um, fitness and to think about within those games and rotation. So uh, that period is gone. We don't have a crazy period like that until the last week of the season now. So it gives us a bit more time to, to work in between. Um, and those have been the challenges. I think there, there are always a lot of challenges. I came in mid-season at Everton, and I found a lot of challenges. We probably had more time to work to the end of the season, so you can get some consistency in work. This is different. Um, but at the same time, um, football is about challenges and you have to tackle them head on. So um, there are challenges um, and we have to keep going. Okay, any more? Yeah, uh, last yeah. one. Last one. Yeah, I just want to touch on Enzo Fernandez. Obviously, he joins for a record signing from midfielder in January. So he's coming into a dysfunctional side. What, what have you made of this time so far? I think he's a fantastic talent. I think a, a young player. To have achieved what he's achieved in this, you know, calendar year or footballing year, footballing year, has been amazing. To be part of a World Cup winning team and to 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 earn himself a move to the Premier League and a club like Chelsea, and I agree, maybe it's a difficult moment to come to the club. He's been here now, you know, for a few months and it's been a difficult time, which will be a challenge for him. But at the same time, I think um, it's a challenge that will make him better because everybody will put a lot of eyes on his performance give him a lot of responsibility when the reality is that his age coming here he also needs support and help and all those things and those things can take time like speaking the language for instance so I think he's a fantastic talent and I think he is the future of Chelsea one off you know central to a lot of it um, but we must also give him that bit of time to settle because a lot would have happened to him very quickly you know so but yeah really, I really like Enzo I've been very very impressed with him okay we'll leave it there cameras off please